Morning guys, Sadden from AC Auto Tech again. So been asked to do some more technical stuff. So first of all, we've got this morning, nice Monday morning. We've got a Honda Jazz with what's suspected as a battery drain. Um, garage, I've already checked the charging um, and the battery there to saying it's okay. Every couple of days, customers happen to jump start the car. So with you, we're gonna go through um, a battery uh, parasitic drain test. So here we go, let's see how we get on. Any test is we're gonna check the battery voltage. So we just use this snap on meter, you know, some some of you won't like it. I uh, we, we tested this compared to you know all the different ones out there. And it, if this come within a couple of percentage of you know all of them, the Pico, the Bosch, all that type of one, you just find this being mobile, nice, quick, easy test. So, first of all, before we do anything, <coughs> when you're testing a battery, we turn the headlights on, and then we're going to give it 10 seconds. What does that do? Well, it allows us to take the surface charge off the battery. And we can see, you know, hold on, we've got a bit of a glare, but 12.2 volts. So, as you can see from the side of the battery, we're going to set it to small. And then we're going to test the battery. So our battery capacity coming back as. So, we're actually getting 89% there. So, obviously, we're going to be looking for a charge and retest on this battery. So what we're going to do is uh, carry on with the rest of the tests and then uh, see what we come back with. We've got a battery that's passed the test. We're going to turn on all the loads. So we're turning on all our lights, our hazards, our main beam, our heaters, the aircon heated. You know, we're going to turn everything on that we've got a load. So we're going to put, you know, keep the car at idle and we're going to test see what this uh, alternator is charging at just to ensure that you know it is actually capable of keeping charge on this battery before we even go any further so let's go and have a look at what we've got so as you can see it is bouncing around a bit but it is maintaining a charge so we can move on to the next test so we connect our just our normal connectors and um, with the scope Onto the uh, battery, we use a high current clamp. We've got a nice long time base, you know, sorry about the glare. Um, and then we're going to do the same thing again. We're going to crank it, start it, and then turn all the consumers on and we're going to measure it. I'll try and get you a decent view of it in a second. I really apologise for the glare. I'll try and uh, get a screenshot up at the end. But basically, all we're doing is yellow's battery voltage, green's current. We're looking to measure how much the battery drops during the thing, how much our current increases, and then that, what the charge rate looks like. So, I'll, like I say, I'll try and include a screenshot in that because it's a bit of a poor video. But yeah, that's basically what we've done there. We can use any oscilloscope. Um, and then, you know, draw all it, that's what the Pico software is doing when you're doing a battery check. So let's carry on with the rest of the tests. We'll actually check our battery drain. So I've got this little tool that I've used to make up. Um, all it is is a battery cable with, with a kill switch in the middle. So we can put our amp meter over there, connected in series without you know the modules dropping out. This wasn't actually my idea. I picked it up on a training course from John Batten down at Auto IQ. But yeah, that's just the one I use. It works great, great idea. Go back to this car now. We've had this sat now for let's have a look the best part of it, two and a bit hours. So as you can see, let's assume in. We got all the car locked at the moment. 67 milliamps. So for this particular age vehicle, that is a lot higher than we'd want. So we're gonna have to do some testing into what's going on with this vehicle. Let's carry on, see what we find. So guys, now we know that we got it uh, we have actually got a drain. What we've got to do is we've got to access the fuse box, obviously, on this car. We've got one inside here, so we need to have this car locked, as you can see. So what we've done is it's actually easier if we've got the door striker here. Is we just move this trim panel back and we've uh, just disconnected the switch so the car can go to sleep as normal. 
and then we're gonna go through and I'm just gonna grab the next meter and we're gonna actually do a voltage drop test over all the fuses. So just to prove we're back on it, we've got the car, you can just see the doors ajar slightly with the lock on. So we're still back to where we were now. Now the car's gone to sleep with the 68 milliamps. So round we go. Yeah, and we're just gonna do a voltage drop test across the terminals. So all we're gonna do is pull our pins across like this. I'm just gonna measure the voltage drop across each fuse in turn and all we're looking for is millivolts as we can see on here across the fuse so measure every fuse until we see the one that's got that so we're going to continue to do them and then i'm going to come back to you when i've done them all so we tested all the fuses inside the car as well now and uh, we've actually found this thing tucked away down here obviously what we're looking for whenever we're looking for parasitic drains is it's always handy to see or speak to the customer see if anything else is being added to the car generally you know that sort of thing is what causes the problems so now i'm gonna go back and just check the fuses that we've marked up and uh, see what results we've got so I know we're going to get a few people that say, you know, why don't you use the uh, thermal image when you're doing battery drains? Well, sometimes it's handy, sometimes it's not. So, you know, if you look at today, we've got half decent weather, it's pretty hot outside. You know, we're looking in the car, we can't really tell for definite. You know, we've got heat source, we've got shiny surfaces. So, you know, we can't say whether we've definitely got anything going on sometimes. So... You know, it's always better to not rely on your thermal images to start with. Go through all your fuses and then go from there. So as you can see, all we've done is we mark the fuses. All we do is go through the ones that have got drop on. We just marked them over. Now I'm dropped right down onto the millivolt scale on the thing. But make sure we get a good contact. As you can see, you know we're getting there or thereabouts. You know, 0.13. We were getting 0.17 before when we tested it. So. We've definitely got a stair drop there. And then if we move around into the cab, you can see, just move the laps on. We've got this lovely fuse that I showed you before. Now, let's just set our meter up here. And then we're going to go across the pins on there again. The contact should bear with me. Here we go. So we're getting naught points. Oh, bear with me. Bad contact on the fuse yet. Oh. Never get the good contact when you're being filmed. So we're getting 0.86 millivolts on there. So now we're going to have a look at the fuse chart and then go from there. Get yeah. once you've gone through, you found all your fuses. What's got what drop? There's a nice little fuse vault chart. So we're going to different one. Make sure that you pick the mini fuse. There's different places available for these type of things. Um, so you know we've got 0.17. So you know close enough to 0.2. So you know that confirms that you know, this is saying 15 milliamp. There we go, 44 milliamp drain on that circuit. So we're going to see what's on that circuit. I got that fuse removed. Just bit with me walking around here. We've removed the fuse from here as well. It's actually sat there under the pliers. Right. Now swipped the scale round to the milliamp scale. So. Now we've removed them fuses, our battery drain on this car is now practically perfect at 1.3 milliamps. It's not going to get pretty any lower than that. So now we've got enough evidence to go to the customer for authorization to find out what's on their fuses and uh, see what's drawing them drain. I'll uh, do another video shortly. Okay, bye bye.